Ever since I was, I can remember, I've always thought of myself as a cartoon character. Maybe I just don't take myself that seriously. Or maybe my sense of identity isn't as strongly linked to what I look like in the physical world. As a kid, I found myself playing by myself a lot. I was already 10 before my sister was born, and the grown-ups were all, well, grown-ups. We also moved often enough that my longest stint at school was just four years. Now, I wouldn't say I was lonely, but I spent a lot of time with just me and my imagination. I guess I got more used to the me that I pictured than to how I often felt in my own skin, this scrawny, awkward, pizza-faced kid. I grew up, of course, but I couldn't shake that feeling as I went about my day, and I'd see myself in the mirror. It wasn't quite what I'd pictured. Well, all that changed in 2013. That's when I first started working in virtual reality, when the first Oculus Rift virtual reality headsets would ship. That's when I first got to experience something called telepresence, where I could see and hear another person in a shared virtual space. That first time, they were just a floating head. But I couldn't believe how much expressiveness just a floating head could convey. From there, I got to experience myself as an avatar, looking in a virtual mirror. I must have stared at that thing for an hour. I couldn't stop thinking about the ways in which we choose to portray ourselves, the ways we don't get to choose how other people see us, and how this technology could make that a choice in a whole new way. I realized for the first time, because of the recent advancements in virtual and augmented reality, I could actually be what I pictured when I saw myself. This is my virtual avatar. It's how others see me when we meet in shared virtual spaces. But what is an avatar? Well, an avatar is a digital representation of you. Avatars started as little icons that represented users on early internet forums. The term avatar, as it relates to user identification, was first coined by Chip Morningstar in 1985 when he was designing Lucasfilm's online role-playing game, Habitat. Avatars have since evolved into complete 3D characters that represent the people in the games we play. And as people spend more time in games like Minecraft or World of Warcraft, Naturally, we start to identify with the communities in those games and with our own role or persona or the version of ourselves in those games. But where does this urge to be someone or something else come from? Well, to answer that, I'm going to hop out of virtual reality now. I'm going to join you guys in the TEDx reality. Hey, everyone. All right. So if we look to history, we can see that we've been altering ourselves as a species for a really long time. Body painting has been found in almost all tribal cultures throughout history. We found jewelry as old as 130,000 years ago. We found body piercings all the way back to 44,000 BC and we found some sick tattoos all the way back to 3000 BC. Now, the fact that some of the oldest clothing we found is jewelry, maybe in part because materials like bone and gemstone last longer than cloth, but it also says we weren't just clothing ourselves to keep warm. As long as 130,000 years ago, we were deliberately altering our appearance as a species to express something of ourselves. Maybe we've been having identity issues for a long time. Or rather, maybe this need to individualize and take control of our outward expression is something innate in us. How many people get their hair cut and styled, shave, or wear makeup? How many of you guys chose the clothes you're wearing today so you'd look nice for this event? See. I'd go as far as to say the need to express ourselves is innate in our connection to each other, because it is a form of expression after all. 
When done in groups, this becomes a cultural act, an expression of unity, of art and ritual that has bonded civilizations and communities for as far back as our recorded history goes. We adopt temporary costume to express everything from joy to grief. We also change our appearance and it evolves over time. But let's fast forward to one of the first alternate realities, Second Life. Second Life is an online virtual world that was started in 2003 and is still active to this day. Second Life grew to over a million users more than a decade before the first virtual reality hardware would come on sale. Second Life has its own hit brands, its own currency, famous avatars, art shows and concerts, real estate, and real connections. It wasn't even VR, but it proved that we could create a place where everyone fit in when we stripped away the limitations that held us back in the physical world. Since then, games like Minecraft, which Microsoft bought for $2.5 billion, have exploded based on this possibility that we can shape our own alternate reality. But let's get back to identity. How is this changing our identity? Well, we can see augmented reality infiltrating our public personas every day today with Snapchat filters, which for non-Snapchat users are a way of augmenting your visual appearance with silly things like bunny ears. <laughs> We're getting more and more used to changing our appearance to suit a joke or a special occasion. Maybe our sense of identity is even more fluid than we thought. And it would also seem that these technologies are inviting us to feel a new sense of creativity in that expression. To quote Ready Player One, Steven Spielberg's blockbuster hit based on Ernest Cline's best-selling novel about a virtual universe called The Oasis. People came to The Oasis for what they could do, but they stayed for who they could be. Who they could be. Now, I know my mom wouldn't be too thrilled at the prospect of me getting a face tattoo, but I can change myself up completely in a digital realm. And it's as easy as logging out to come back down to base reality. But the more time I spend as my avatar self, the more other people start to identify with me that way, and the more I start to see myself that way too. And if you're like me, and you don't see the complete you in the face looking back at you every day, that's a pretty empowering experience. Today, the technology to be a digital avatar exists through hardware like the uh, Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive virtual reality headsets. But with VR, you have to go to a completely virtual world. So you can't be your avatar self in the real world just yet. But Microsoft makes an augmented reality headset called the HoloLens that aims to change that. Magic Leap is another augmented reality headset that's supposed to come on the market this year. But looking at these guys, you might say we've got a long way to go before you're going to see someone walking down the street wearing one. So where is this going? Are we all going to walk our, around with AR glasses on our faces and interact interchangeably with real and virtual people and things? Not exactly. But once the technology miniaturizes, just like every other technology before it has, and the first stylish pair comes on the market, your kids sure are. Because once that first breed of killer apps, especially social experiences, start to appear through those lenses, kids without a pair are going to feel like they're missing out on the whole experience. And that fear of missing out, that's part of what's going to drive adoption, just like we saw with the cell phone but I think even bigger, because you could call this the final computing platform, where technology adapts to us now instead of the other way around. And in this future, kids will see their world through filters, and you guys may not understand why they're into these things, but that wouldn't be any different than your parents not understanding what you were into as a kid. 
those filters will show your friends decked out in their fancy avatars. They'll probably show strangers walking by in theirs too. Eventually, you may hear people say things like, I feel so exposed without my avatar on. This may seem far-fetched, but one day, it could even become disrespectful to look at someone directly without their permission. The future is going to be weird, that's for sure. And weird can sound scary, but like I said before, this also opens up so much potential for creative expression. If we can finally be anything we can imagine, why should we hold back from sharing that imagination with the world? Because our digital identity, it isn't about the technology, and it's not about escaping reality. It's about letting others see us a little closer to how we really see ourselves. And through that lens, maybe we can also see through some of our differences and see each other for what we really are inside. These unique creations longing for a less mediated connection. So the next time you guys look in the mirror, I want you to ask yourself this. What if our inner weirdo could finally come out and see we're all a little weird deep down? Because isn't it that weirdo in there that makes you, you in the first place? And wouldn't it be incredible if we could all learn to celebrate that? Thank you.